gets me through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. G'day friends, uh, welcome to some of the best bits of Jodie and Hazy from across the year And I'll tell you this much for free, we've all aged terribly yeah. in the last 10 months Yeah, mm. that's what happens when you get up for a year at 4am Yeah You look 79 Oh my now. gosh, mm. yeah Those crow's feet A few more greys coming through, crow's feet, what do you mean? <laughs> I've got crow's feet It's around your eyes, oh. like smile line Jeez it's nice though, it means you've smiled in your life Okay, I just like that you've just gone, you know what, bugger it, I'm just going to let myself go Let's go, girls. Okay, chit chat time. Ladies assemble. (laughs) (laughs) Do like a little page. All the ladies to Studio One, please. All the ladies. Okay, this is how this works. We have. All the girls assembled here, and we're going to talk about stuff that we've maybe spoken about off air that probably deserves an on air conversation. So, we've got producer Zoe here. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Zoe's in her 20s in a new relationship. I am. Relatively happy. (laughs) 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 Um, But also a bit of a career girl as well. Absolutely smashing goals at work. And we've got um, newsreader Abby. RBF face. <laughs> in your, Correct. In your 30s, happily single. Yep. However, something has happened to you this week yep. that probably needs to hit the airwaves, I reckon. So this has been happening to me since 2020. Mm. A guy over in, I think he lives in, well, I've done some digging. I'm going to be transparent. I did a bit of digging and he lives in Melbourne. Mm. Um, he has been messaging me on Facebook Messenger since 2020. Right. Random messages every three, six, eight months. One time it went a year until I'd heard from him. And it's just like, hey, hey, how you going? Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? And it got to the point where I eventually just went, oh, hi, sorry, do I know you? And he goes, oh, your dog's really cute. And I didn't reply. And then it just continuously kept going. Mm. And it got to then the point that he said, you can reply. I'm not weird or anything. Oh, no, now you're sounding weird. Yeah, no, no, yeah. He, he definitely weird. <laughs> <laughs> but in this time as well, I did a bit of digging, as I said. He met a woman. He got engaged. He's married. Mm. This guy's married. Right. And I've spoken to other people. Just before I walked in here, Maddie Rowe stopped me and said, I've been getting messages on Instagram from a guy since 2018, just like random videos that he sends me. Yeah. Um, number one, it makes me feel – I'm like it, it really pisses me off because as a woman, we feel not safe – a lot of the time. So when you're walking out in the street, you get your keys out, all that sort of yep. stuff. Yep. And I've got a social media account and I understand that, yes, I'm on socials, I get that, and I've also in a position where I am have a bit of a public profile. But the fact that people just continuously think it's okay after not getting a reply to message you mm. is just wrong. So number one, it actually gets me, like I'm te- I get a bit teary over this because I just feel like it's just not okay. Um, no, but also, Abs, you know what people are going to say, just block him. Oh, well, that's it. And and so that's my thing is I've turned notifications off on my phone. So all randomly, all of a sudden, I've got six messages and I'm like, oh, my God. And I've, I'm so – I know this is an excuse, but I'm so busy and I forget to do it. <laughs> so, yes, number one, I should just block him. But I, I guess I want to know unwanted attention and how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Has anyone out there had the same thing? Um, how does it make you feel? Mm. And also, who who's behind it? Like, have you had a friend's boyfriend messaging you or have you had your boss messaging you stuff? And and what have you done about it? Yeah, okay. Producer Zoe, have you ever had it? Oh, yeah. I'm lucky. Not not so much. Um, when I was a bit younger, maybe, like in high school and things like that, boys just not getting the message. I did see someone for a bit and after telling them I wasn't interested would still rock up to my house with coffees and stuff, like <laughs> trying to win me over. Ooh. Yeah, but... You know, bit, like different. He was he was just really trying. Like he wasn't giving off creep vibes. But even still, yeah, like, but, but no, even still, no he needs to have no. boundaries. Yeah, yeah. You can't just rock up to someone's house. No. Yeah. Like, mm. Unless yeah, you, yeah. unless Uber eats or something. Unless yeah. it's Uber eats. Yeah. And, and, you like, and you're like, I told you no. So you literally <laughs> ordered coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, give me some spice. Uh, <laughs> Did you deal with this much, Joe? Yeah, I've had it. Well, uh, even since being married? Yeah, yeah, I've had it a bit. And I think well, I think it comes with the territory. Doing, oh, I shouldn't say that. It shouldn't come with the territory. It shouldn't. But, um, but I guess doing this job, oh, I've, yeah, I've, con- I've had me- messages from the same men constantly that mm. I never reply to. And the same thing, I, I've never felt threatened enough to block them. Mm. You know what I mean? And also I think as we, women, why do we feel bad for blocking someone? Yeah. Even when it's not our fault. 
why do you feel like you're in the wrong? Because you go, eh, that's yeah. enough. Yeah. I think it's the same premise of, oh, I'll give us a smile. It's like yeah. we're supposed to be. Yeah. Be smiley. Yeah. Last one, I've, so. I had, I had, I went through a stage there where someone had my phone number and I, every time they would call, it would be a FaceTime of a per- certain part of their genitalia oh to the point where I went to the police and said, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, well. That was extreme and they were like, oh, there's nothing we can do. I'm like, you can't track this guy down and say, stop, stop doing it. Calling with your. <laughs> Let's go to Leah. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. I'm so sorry if this has happened to you. Um, yes. So about five years ago, there was a guy who was messaging me. Um, I was only about 17. Um, so at the time, I thought he was being nice. Um, so I gave him my address. He came over one time. He was really, really creepy. And then I told him I didn't want to see him again. And he would always message me. I wouldn't reply. And then he would just drop off like food shopping at my door because he told me that I didn't eat well. Um, so he would just drop food at my door, even though I hadn't replied. I hadn't replied for weeks and he would just always drop food to my door. Um, also, my side, my bedroom window didn't lock. So he would oh. like put flowers and things. He would open my window and just like oh. throw them in. Oh, my God. Um, and I had not responded to him. Um, and then I found out that he had a wife and a son. Um, for context as well, he was about 37 and I was 17. Did you um, know he was 37, God. sorry, when he was messaging you at the start? No, he, no. no. And so how did, um, how, did you, how did it all end up, Leah? Uh, so I told his wife. Um, his wife left him and divorced him. And then the um, weird... So I was getting really creepy messages from him. Like he would write poems about me. Oh. He would um, make memes about me, like lovely things. It was really, really strange. Um, and then when I told his wife, he turned into just straight abuse. He said it was my fault that they um, divorced. It was my fault that he left. It, that she left him. Um, and that went on for a couple of months as well. I blocked him. He would still make little accounts just to message me. Oh, my God. Um, That's awful. But that was about five years ago now, and I think he's probably a lonely man now. Yeah. I hope so. And it's definitely not your fault. It's no. his fault for doing the wrong thing and chasing someone 20 years younger than him, yeah. a teenager. Oh, yeah. Man. I was actually I was still a minor at that point. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, yeah. Far out, Leah. Thank you so much for your call this morning. Let's go to Ali. Ali, I'll jump in here and say... You were one of the victims of this guy out at Elizabeth. Let's not mention his names because I'm not sure if it's still before the court, but this happened to you with him? Yeah, actually, I was, yeah, he messaged me um, over the past four or five years. Uh, I never responded to any of them, but, yeah, he just kept going. He found me on a dating site about five or six years ago and then searched my Facebook for me and just kept messaging me constantly. I had a guy recently who I matched with him and then I sort of looked at his profile and went, oh, probably not for me. I unmatched him and he found me on Facebook and said, why'd you unmatch me for? Like, I wanted oh, to talk to you. Geez. So, so Ali, have you heard from him recently or has it all stopped? No, not since the whole court case thing, thankfully. And yeah. was it a case where you saw him on the news and went, oh, my God? Yeah, my sister-in-law actually tagged me and she's like, oh, my God, is this the guy that has been messaging you? And I was like, yes. Yeah. Wow. Wowee. Well, thank you so much for your call, Tennille. Oh, gosh, these calls never end, do they? Mm. <laughs> Tennille, what happened? Uh, so I used to work in a store as a cashier and I had a customer come through and I made small talk, was really friendly as you are with customers. Um, and then he started coming back frequently and never purchasing things. And on Valentine's Day, he bought me flowers and he'd bring me cups of coffee and stuff like that. Um, always just sort of checking in on me. It was It was really weird. And then one day I went to work, had lunch break, came back, and he was like, he was there, and he said, oh, you've just been at home having some lunch, sitting out in the sun, basically. Oh, so, that's like yeah, a it was very, very stalkery. Oh, yeah, it was. Wow. And and how's, yeah. how's it all ended up, Daniel? So uh, he kind of would just keep coming in, and, you know, uh, me being, it was a big power dynamic, I guess, he's the custom for me having to be kind to him. Mm. Um, so I basically just said, look, I've got a partner, and I did. My partner worked in the store as well, and I said, my boyfriend's just over there. Like, yeah, you know, good. we probably don't appreciate you coming in anymore. And I just sort of had to leave it at that without offending him too much, and that's the thing we women do. We don't want to offend no, these creeps. Yeah. I know, <laughs> even though you've been that. mortified and offended, Tanil, you did absolutely the right thing, and you didn't do anything wrong, and I would say that to all the women out there who are feeling mm. that way. Thank you for sharing your stories this morning. I think we should give everyone an earthquake voucher yeah. that we've spoken to. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, my goodness. I think the last thing I want to say is that if you're... And look, I get that it happens, it's men and women, but especially men, if you're out there and you're messaging someone repeatedly on social media or they've told you that they're not interested, please stop Mm. because you don't understand how it makes us feel. 
it's unsafe mm. and they're obviously not interested, so just move on. Mm. Uh, it's Neil and Ali as well. Thank you so much for getting involved yeah. in the conversation. It's very, very brave stories. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Time for a chit-chat. Let's go, girl. Okay, let's do this. So we have a producer, Zoe, in your 20s. That's right. In a lovely relationship with yeah. um, Hazy's boyfriend, Alex. Hazy's boyfriend, Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got a newsreader, Abby, who is in her 30s. Happily single. Aggressively single. Aggressively single and yeah. loving it after my dating disaster this week. Yes. We might talk about that at some point. We probably have to talk about that (laughs) because that is definitely noteworthy. Yes, What you've been through in the last week. Yeah, it definitely is. However, today we're talking about friendships, female friendships. (gasps) They're interesting, aren't they? Mm, Complex. And and I would very much argue that female friendships can be more intense and more complicated than actual relationships in your life sometimes. Mm. Yeah. But we're talking deal breakers this Mm -hmm. morning. What is it about a female friend in particular that would make you go, that's enough. Yeah. I'm done here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I no longer want to be friends with you. I'll yeah. go first. Okay. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Murder no good. Murder not is a red a, flag Not for always me. a deal breaker, though. Oh, God. No. <laughs> no. Always. Sometimes you still go back for a second date. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, a friendship deal breaker is when you, and I felt this, when you walk out of a room and you're not quite sure what that person's going to say about you mm, behind your back. Yeah. Mm. If that, like, I'm ride or die. I am an aggressively loyal person. If mm. I've got your back, I've got it hard for life. Mm. But if I get the feeling with a female friend that I don't quite know what they're going to talk about when I'm not there, mm. out. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, right. That's right. Hard. Do you it's wait? Ride or die. Like, is it straight up as soon as you've got the feeling, that's it, done? Or do you wait to it's confirm not, they've I, said something? Not so much the feeling. I think it's more mm, when it actually it. happens, yeah. the yeah. confirmation. The confirmation. What yeah. about for you? I've had this conversation with my girlfriends a lot, actually. I've got... There's three of us. We're best friends, Tallulah, Kate and I. And we... That's not what Tallulah says. <laughs> no, yeah, nah, exactly. You should hear the Deal conversations breaker. I've had <laughs> with her behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we've talked about it because we've been so close for so long. What is the, the only thing that could get in the way of our friendship, we've decided, is... Uh, hooking up with or dating one of each other's exes. Yeah. I think that's the yeah. only thing because it just feels like the ultimate betrayal, right? Yeah, right. When your feelings are that involved. Can it's I play devil's advocate here? Yeah, they're next for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Can, but can I say, like, just a little bit down the track, mm. there are some things that arise, arise in friendships that you don't foresee and can mm. also be deal breakers. So you might think, I think at your age in your 20s, oh, you're like, mm. oh, my God, we're going to be friends for oh, life, no. L-Y-F. No, I'm not um, ignorant to the fact that things will change. But right now, mm. like with you, arguments, whatever, the only thing right now that could tear us apart is if one of the girls dated my ex or vice versa. Yeah, right, right. okay. Right, yeah, you there's have. a few things to that. I could play devil advocates there too. <laughs> anyway, um, for me, uh, lying. And, right. and big lies. I, I cannot stand people who are feeding you one story mm. but not taking, you know, in any situation, and I talk about this a lot, like with ex-boyfriends and stuff, now as I get older, I'm like, I take full responsibility for my part in that story. Mm. Yeah. Um, but for people who lie and constantly lie um, and then you find out that what they're telling you is not actually tr- actually the truth, I can't stand that. There is something about someone who can't put their hand up and go, Oh, uh, you know, I messed up. Yeah, yeah, hundred mm. percent. Yeah, wow. Okay, so much different for bikes. What do you mean? Well, in terms of just how complicated female relationships and friendships can be. Yeah. Like for blokes, for example, a couple of days ago, I got a text from uh, one bloke in particular who I haven't spoken to, I reckon, for about five or six years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, three-way text, and he said, boys, I hope this is uh, the right numbers, but um, should we catch up for a beer? And mm-hmm. we're all like, absolutely, let's lock up a time. Yeah. So you we weren't... actually just not speak for five or six years and then go yeah. bang and pick it up. You weren't annoyed that you hadn't heard from him in all absolutely that time? Not, not to say, congratulations, Hazy, you've had 17 kids. Like... No, <laughs> but he's had kids as well. Yeah, right. So just life going in different directions, but we'll be able to immediately pick it up. I Shout out to him, Matt you bloody legend. I've got <laughs> friends like that, though, that you don't yeah. speak for a few months or whatever and then a te- there's a text or whatever. I think that's okay. Absolutely. I think they're the best sort of friendships, mm. the ones that are unconditional. It's like, okay, I get life's gotten in the way. Yeah. I haven't heard from you, but that's okay. It's fine. When I see you, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Yeah. Mm. Chelsea, good morning. What's the friendship deal breaker? Hi. Um, so I had this friend and when we were younger, we used to meet up in the most oddest places. And so the one place that she used to organise to meet up was the top of like a five-storey car park. And a few nights before, she'd asked me whether we could meet up there at like the middle of night. It was like eight o'clock. 
And I said, sure, that I was on the way home from work. And when I left, I rang her to see if she was on her way because I wasn't that far away. And she said, I'm five minutes away. So I rocked up. And I rang her again and she said that she was on her way again and then she didn't turn up for an hour and left me in the dark at the top of a random car park. What? Um, so <laughs> I went home and then when I, literally the minute I had gotten home, she rang me and she was like, where are you? And started full abusing me because I'd left and left her at the top of the car park. Yeah. And I said, if you're not going to turn up at the right time, then don't meet me. Mm. It's that simple. And there she's done that a few times. Wow. Um, and said that she'd be there and then wasn't. Okay. And then <laughs> the cherry on top was later that night. I was obviously asleep because she messaged me at 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, she'd had a bit of an accident with her boyfriend and she went on about, me going out to get her plan B, oh. Oh. and okay. I said, oh. no way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good call. Okay, so um. first red flag was meeting in top of car park. <laughs> yeah. Five what, story. What, was your friend Drake? Were you shooting yeah, a wow. hip-hop video? Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> was there a helipad? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Luke. How are you going? What's the friendship deal breaker? Uh, so me and the partner were having a bit of a tough time, so I reached out to a childhood friend who's been there for many years. Yes. Um, he then decided to say, oh, yeah, no problems. We've got, I've got no plans this weekend. I'm just going to be at home. If you need anything, I went, yeah, no problem. Um, little did he know I was still talking um, to my partner at that time and found out he invited her around there for a bit of a get-together, a bit of an adult party <gasps> per se. Um, then to find out, I think it was about two days later from one of his friends, that we both uh, socialised with saying that he had a uh, female friend coming around that was going through a breakup and it was going to be an easy night for him. Uh, uh, yuck. God. Hate what it. What a sleazy Dirty snake. bags. <laughs> uh, dirty birds deserve each other. Yeah. Right? Dirty, yeah. dirty. Mm-hmm. See, that's kind of same vibes as hooking up with an ex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, they weren't even ex. They were just going through a rough patch. Yeah. yeah. That's awful. That's, that's horrible. horrible. And that's there's a lesson in that too, to never bag someone who's going through a breakup, never bag uh, the partner because if they do oh, get back yeah, together, yeah. It's, yeah, tough. yeah, awkward. Uh, Shannon, friendship deal breaker for you. Hey, um, <clears throat> so I had a birthday drinks and celebration and it was like a, a engagement celebration as well because I'd recently got engaged and it was for like my fiancé to meet all, all of my friends and family in like a group social setting. Yep. Um, and one of my really good friends was like, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't come, I can't get a babysitter. And I was like, oh, that's okay, like, totally understand, you know, but we'll, we'll organise something else. And she's like, I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Anyways, later in the night, I go on Snapchat, and she is at the showdown with her partner. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to laugh. Oh, it's sorry. Not oh, funny. It's, it's the showdown, though. No. It is the showdown. No. Oh, I mean, we nice. sort of get it. It's tough, isn't it? Tough. Which way? <laughs> Which way are you going to do I'll do that to your friend, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so sorry. I can't come to your engagement party. Go, power! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we take Abby? Good morning. Hello. Mine is that my best friend told me to essentially break up with my partner. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. And what was your yeah, response? I... Well, I'm all for, like, being there for your friend and, you know, talking them through the options. Yeah. But you cannot, you do not have the right to say your partner's not good enough for you, mm. break up with them. Mm. And ever since then, they've just never been the same friend. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, it'd be hard fair. to. You know, what's yeah. so tough about that, I would really hope that if my girlfriends didn't like Alex, they'd tell me. But then if it actually happened... That's, mm. How do you deal with what that? What about if one of your friends likes Alex too much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back off, what about if I told you to break up with Alex <laughs> so and then I started dating you? <laughs> that's a tough one. Oh, the terrible. whole friend boyfriend thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the key takeaway in all of this is we all love Alex. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Sure. We, we do. all want to date him. <laughs> <laughs> It is so time for a chit-chat. Let's go, girls. Yeah, the girls. Yeah, excuse me, I'm just going to kick a door down. (laughs) (laughs) It's so time for a chit-chat, and this is where us girls get together. Hazy, you can vaguely be involved. Um, Zoe, you're in your 20s in a newish relationship with a much Mm -hmm. younger man. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, Abby, you're in your 30s, very much single, but slaying life, I'd have to say. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Single as a Pringle, though. Slay. You slay, girl. Slay. Um, so... This week's chit chat will revolve around age gaps. Yeah, totally. And, uh, mm. We were just saying I cop a lot of flack from all of you for dating a much younger man. He's two years younger than yeah. me. Yeah, but uh, mentally, how how <laughs> are you? Yeah. 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 Mentally, it's criminal. You cougar. <laughs> you absolute cougar. I know, know that's yeah. me. It's, uh, it's pretty jarring when I say out loud that he's born in the year 2000. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Oh. Do, you know, do you know what's outrageous? Is that uh, I spent a long time with uh, Alex on the weekend mm. and I was born in 1985, but it's some Somehow feels like we're almost the same age. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, a, it was outrageous to witness. Eerily, scores sort of scary connection. There. Yeah, yeah, very. And I um, love it. But despite how much fun you all make of me, it got us talking of, uh, about real age gap relationships and if we've ever been in them, what we think of them. And abs, it came up that you have been in quite a big age gap relationship. <sighs> yeah, it was pretty big. Um, so it was 18 years between myself <gasps> and this gentleman. Wow. It's big up. My boss's best friend at one point. Um, yeah, I was 22, he was 40. So right. I look back now and just, yeah way too big I was way too young mm. um, maybe now it might be different but yeah I was way too young to be with someone oh did, he, did he treat you well um, no no <laughs> Good, I put my hand up though as I get older and go I caused a lot of dramas but also you know him being older you would have thought that he would have you know taught me how to be in an adult relationship and that wasn't the case. It's right. also what you do, Abby, and that is some for some reason probably blame yourself. Yeah. When you're 18, and of course there's a lot going on for anyone who's 18. Mm. Yeah, but I, I just look at 22, you're just such a baby. Mm. Oh, I was gotcha. working in hospitality, I was a terror of a person, <laughs> living my best life, and he copped a lot of it, but also he did some pretty shady things as well. Yes, so well, Can I yeah. ask you this, having lived through that experience, do mm -hmm. you think that an age gap, nearly 20 year age can work. I've actually got friends who there's 20 years between them and they're now together. They've got twins living their best life up on the Gold Coast. So I do believe that it can work. But interestingly, we went and did some volunteering last week and I met a lovely lady. She's 83, her husband's 94. And I made a comment. I said, oh, a bit controversial. You know, how long have you been mm -hmm. together? And they've been together for like 65 years or something. Mm. And she said there's been no issue with the age gap until, until now. now yeah. Because she's 83, she's volunteering still. She wants to go and have fun with the gals. Yeah. And her husband's 94, he's going through some health issues. And she you know he can't drive so she's doing all of that for him yeah so, that's funny isn't it yeah. because you think you think the age gap becomes less and less relevant the older you get mm. but i have never thought about that that when you get to that age then yeah. one's mobile the other one isn't that's yeah. rough because physically she was at harvest rock on the weekend yeah. she get <laughs> she was, on his shoulders yeah. but he's got some back issues so. i heard that uh, she was on your shoulders at one point but <laughs> yeah, one point, <laughs> <was>. wouldn't surprise <laughs> me um but yeah i looking back now not okay but also you know you go through what you go through for a reason so yeah, I I will say I think I feel like there's a little bit of a double standard with this. Like, so if an older bloke gets with a younger woman, then it's like all the mates are like, yeah. Mm. Whereas if an older say cougar gets together with a younger man, then it's kind of a little bit frowned upon. Is it? Yeah, I'm not sure how well I'm representing the male species. I'm not sure how well supported it is if you're going out with someone who's vastly younger for I don't think we're all sitting around going, yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't don't ever make a, that noise again. If I've got mates who are 40 and they're going out with 22-year-olds, I don't think we're all getting together. Yeah, like, no. How does that? Yeah. Just, yeah right. That's my, just my opinion. Yeah. My boss said to him, you leave her alone and do not go near her, and he obviously didn't listen. Yeah, right. <laughs> just couldn't resist you, Abs. <laughs> they can work, though, these relationships. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, dependent. I think every situation is different, but yeah. it'd be nice to hear yes. from people. You would. Let's go to Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. What's the gap, Lise? So we're 11 years apart. So I'm 40 and he's 51. Right. Okay. And does it work? It does. We've been together. I first met him when I was 29. <gasps> so, yeah, we'd both been married before, had children with um, other partners, and now we've got a beautiful little two-year-old daughter of our own. Okay. Wow. So, so it's a blended family now, is it? It's a blended family. So his son lives with us, my daughter lives with us, they're both 15. Yeah. And then our little two-year-old, Daisy. Okay. Lisa, are you happy? Yes, so, so happy. Um, so, like, I'm a, I'm a vet nurse now. I feel like my career's he supported me um, in doing everything that I've wanted to do. I haven't found the age gap a problem at all. 
In that, fact, his maturity it probably yeah, <laughs> has helped yeah. along the way. Yeah, I guess um, there is a bit to be said by the fact that they do say that men mature a little slower than women. Mm-hmm. So just How a tad. very <laughs> dare you. <laughs> so I think we definitely have met in the middle there because... I feel like I'm obviously very mature and he's quite immature. Right. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that incredible? Lisa, my wife is younger than me, but, I mean, mentally, uh, she's so much older. Yes, yeah, she uh, is. So much older. Indeed. <laughs> Thanks so much, Lisa. Thanks for your call.